Hello, I'm Tanya Fletcher. Thanks for joining us. The dust is still settling from two days of raucous council meetings that made national news. Richmond politicians voted 7-2 to two to explore the pros and cons of a supervised consumption site in the city. But as our Justin McElroy explains, whether this idea even sees the light of day remains a big question mark. How did Richmond get from this, 500 views on YouTube in a mostly empty room, to this? The metaphors you use, uh, yes, we've heard all those metaphors before off the internet. But I can tell you... <laughs> 18,000 viewers, protests and police, councillors being accosted while they vote. In favour, I've called the question. All in favour, keep your space. It started on January 30th when the motion was put forward by two councillors. The phrase drug consumption site appeared five times in the motion, and one of the councillors who put it forward, Kashid, did plenty of interviews saying he thought a consumption site was a good idea. This is what is needed versus letting the people uh, consume their drugs in public spaces such as laneway, alcoves, uh, benches, where it's in plain view of the public. This, these are the complaints that we've had but we have a solution to it. But Richmond can't build or operate a site. That falls to the provincial government through Vancouver Coastal Health. Despite that, some headlines didn't capture that nuance. That different impression soon moved on to social media and online petitions. At the committee level, the motion passed, moving it to the final stage. The headlines changed, but the controversy kept building. That led to Monday's committee meeting. Hey, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Where the chaos provoked more interest, including from the Conservative Party. But all along, the province hadn't shown an interest in creating a site, which Premier David Eby emphasized on Tuesday afternoon. My understanding is uh, that they're trying to get a better handle on uh, why Richmond is bringing forward this proposal at this time, whether what's proposed actually meets the needs in Richmond, because uh, from their perspective, this is not uh, what is immediately needed in that city. And by Tuesday night, many of the councillors in favour of the motion expressed surprise at the backlash. I couldn't understand why so many people have come forward and are so upset. But then I went online and I found out what people are reading. They still passed the motion. And on Wednesday, Vancouver Coastal Health once again affirmed that they did not endorse a drug consumption site. It means Richmond staff can study the issue, but it's unclear what this next step forward is, other than Richmond politicians dealing with a more divided community over a thing where nothing has been decided. That is our Justin McElroy reporting. Let's continue our coverage with more on the fallout of that council decision. Richmond City Hall has been the backdrop, yes, of vitriolic anger, offensive words, and scenes of turmoil as well. Mira Baines breaks down the emotional battle and a closer look at why it unfolded the way it did. I'm here in Richmond to explore why tensions escalated over a plan to explore setting up a supervised injection site. Answers. This was the scene last night as councillors were voting. A woman makes a beeline for councillor Cash Heed. She was escorted out by RCMP. Heed had put the motion forward, which resulted in a 7-2 to two vote. It all happening too fast, and I think it's uh, required a little bit more explanation from City Hall. This popular Chinese language commentator explains why it's such a lightning rod issue for many in the immigrant community. Hong Kong became a British colony in the 1800s when the British began smuggling opium into Chinese ports and causing widespread addiction. Hong Kong as well as people in China for the past hundred or years or so are very, very, shall I say, under the shadow of drugs. We knew how drug can destroy a person, how drug can destroy a family and how drug can destroy a whole community and eventually weaken the whole country. He says people have lots of questions and feel ignored, allowing misinformation to flourish. The city of Richmond did issue a statement saying no drugs would be given out to users at a potential site. This Richmond city councillor who changed her mind about the plan points out the motion lacked information. So it wasn't clear and straightforward. And certainly people getting it secondhand from someone who is translating it for them totally misunderstood it perhaps, thinking it totally was coming in tomorrow morning, we were go going to open up shop here in Richmond. 
She suggests the city should be examining a broad range of options and says many people were upset. I think it stokes some racial tensions. It's not just one group, though. I've heard from peer people all over the community, why are we asking for this, what are we doing? And they're from all different backgrounds. The issue has been polarizing and politicians have waded in. This exchange caught on camera and retweeted by federal conservative leader Pierre Polyev. RCMP says it condemns this hate incident, but no criminal offense was committed. Community opposition against harm reduction has been making headlines elsewhere in the Lower Mainland. Most recently, the Yaletown overdose prevention site also attracted protests. While some of the reasons may be different, the polarization on the issue is the same. Mira Baines, CBC News, Richmond.